one day we were going out in the car and um, just about to drive off and he just said to me, oh, Mum, I'm, I'm glad I've got dyslexia because now I know I'm not stupid. And that was the whole crux of it. He just thought there was something wrong with him, that he was a dummy. And um, I think it was good for him because it gave him a reason as well. Ryan is just one of the 7% of school children in New Zealand who are dyslexic. And in the school reports, and it was coming out that his reading was falling behind and his writing was really messy and his spelling was terrible. When he was down and sad, he'd be in his room for three hours crying and we'd be in there trying to console him and stuff. Sort of got this emotional wreck in front of you and Paul Megan would be standing in the doorway just probably thinking, what, what the heck's going on here, you know, what's wrong with him? And it kind of went on for a couple of months and we sort of started to get quite worried about it because he'd just cry for hours on end. He was sad and that he'd felt sad since he was five and that he wasn't enjoying life. Just, yeah, really upsetting. He didn't want to be there. He didn't want to be at school. We were sort of at a loss for what was going on. He basically asked for help. So we asked our doctor. She suggested Marion Oto, the children's mental health unit. And they got it out of him that it was all revolved around school. I was over at my girlfriend's house one day and I was talking to her about it and she said to me, it sounds like he's dyslexic. I contacted Spelled and told them you know, what our situation was and they said, well, because of the pilot program they had extra funding so Ryan's assessment was free, which was a massive saving. Sharon Purchase is managing the pilot program for Spelled. The Spelled pilot program was set up to gather more evidence about what happens when you get early intervention to these children at age seven when they're first starting to really show signs of not coping in the classroom. We've pulled in 42 children throughout New Zealand and we've been teaching them twice a week all year, from the poorest one decile schools to the decile 10 schools. So at this stage in New Zealand, we are mainly only able to help children from families who can afford to pay. We constantly fundraise, apply to charities for grants, and when we can get them, then we have hardship grants and we will go out and reach out to a child from a, a very low income family. I'm Judith Alexander and I'm a spelled assessor. The assessment is an important part of this, of any, any remedial type program, particularly the spelled program. We look at things like the spelling, rapid picture naming, looking at what their knowledge is, looking at literacy, also looking at their thinking, so if how they process information. If we write a report, the spelled tutor can look at how they might change or alter their program to meet the needs of the child. There's a lot of people that think themselves failures in terms of school, but it's actually because they haven't necessarily had the right tuition or they haven't um, had the right help so that, that they can actually learn the way that they learn best. He came back that his dyslexia was only mild. It wasn't really as bad as a lot of other kids. It was still enough to, um, to yeah, just bring him down. I'm Catherine Bird. I'm a Spell teacher. I work with uh, Spelled New Zealand and got invited to work on the pilot program with Ryan. When I first started to hear about Ryan, I was a little bit concerned. I thought, well, I've got quite a, a difficult child here. He had anxiety problems um, related to coming to school. He was disruptive and being sat with his face to the wall and his back to the class. And he was throwing pencils around and shouting and quite bad behavior from last year. I was getting yelled at heaps annoying and real bad. But you were being a bit naughty in class too, weren't you? Yeah, at the start I wasn't. He knows he's clever, but he doesn't understand why he isn't producing the work that other children are producing. With Ryan, because we were working with the pilot program, it was two three quarter hour lessons in a week. His biggest need was his reading, his spelling, comprehension, but also the outcome of what the problem is, I guess you could say. For me, the thing that I'm most interested in is how his brain is working. Last year, I... Grew. Okay. G-R-E-W. Well done. There's actually quite a few in this group. Flu, 
flew in a plane, F-L-E-W. First lesson that I do with a child, I do an eye tracking test. When I brought the pen in to his nose, well one eye came in and the other eye went this way and I said, you are concentrating on that pen, aren't you? You are concentrating, aren't you? And he goes, yes, you have got both eyes. Yes, I have, you know, this, you know, but one eye was off and the other eye was in and of course the dominant eye was sending the message to the brain. So. Um, so I spoke to, I got Hayley in actually and said, you stand behind me and you watch. So we did the eye tracking and, and I said, you need to see a behavioural optometrist. When it comes to diagnosing these areas, generally when parents come in to see us, they are certainly relieved that they can find some explanation as to why their child is not progressing as they would expect. Most of the kids that we see are, are bright and intelligent, uh, but the parents are frustrated because they're not making the progress. That's the goal of therapy, is to provide sufficient visual skills, uh, whether it's eye tracking, the mechanics of the eyes, or whether it's uh, how well we process the information. And this is essentially attention training. What I want you to do, thanks, is uh, call out the numbers, starting at the top here and going all the way down to the bottom. We really see what we're doing as being complementary. If we don't diagnose and treat these problems. For some kids it is going to be profoundly difficult for them to uh, progress and move forward at school. Sometimes we see students that are functioning okay at school but uh, the parents are very aware of the fact that their kids are not uh, performing as well as they could do but no one's been able to identify what the problem is. What every school needs in fact is some kind of auditing process where they can go through and look at the visual and auditory uh, development of the child to see whether there aren't any underlying physiological type problems uh, which are affecting the rate of learning. Ryan's um, behavioural exercise is given to him from the optometrist um, and it's all to do with their spatial awareness. Um, so I touch Ryan in a spot and, and, I then, hit the board. and then he has to touch the same spot on the board. I think they give you certain exercises one after the other to all help that reading, that flow of moving your eyes across the page. When I sort of look at the word and I try and look at it but it goes all blurry, now that doesn't happen anymore. Unless you actually ask the child, do the letters stay still, they don't think to say anything. You know, it's like children with just poor vision, they think everyone looks at a blurry world. It's usually they're a bit older before the parents realise they have a sight problem. Let's carry on with our lesson. You can have that space, I'll have this space. Working memory is the underlying problem that a lot of these children have. I would spend half that time working on memory because if they can't remember and if they can't retrieve, then they're not going to achieve at school. This is quite hard, it's much harder than doing short vowels like cat and hat and bed and pin and what have you because they have to have visual memory for this one plus auditory memory. What I do is I give him a word and then he stands on the vowel um, pattern that fits that word. If I said um, scream, good, okay, so can you spell scream for me? S-C-R-E-E-M-E-M-E-M-E-M-E-M-E-M-E-M-E-M-E-M-E-M-E-M-E-M-E-M-E-M-E-M-E-M-E-M-E-M-E-M-E-M-E-M-E-M-E-M-
I left school in the first term of seventh form because I said to my mum, I've had enough. School's getting me nowhere, it's doing nothing for me. I want to leave. I would be better off leaving and getting a job and help, help support us as a family. So throughout, all throughout high school, I felt was a waste of my time. <laughs> it was very, very difficult because I wanted to, wanted to do better and I knew I could do better but I just needed that extra help. And this is what Spout has given me. Mika is also dyslexic, but unlike Belinda, he is being taught in a supportive environment. We had concerns about uh, Mika's development when it got to the point where we didn't think that teachers, teacher aides were enough. Duncan, the deputy principal of Campbell's Bay on the North Shore, pointed out the Spout program and said, you know, this could be a good method for him to perhaps progress a little bit faster or, or define what the problem is. We got involved with the Spell Project through a librarian at our school. It was a holistic approach to that child. Um, the other part that really interested me was the fact that it was an approach where it was working with the school. So what's the first one? A. A. E. I. O. U. U. Right. The tutor, Marianne, is fantastic. She is involved in meetings with the parents, with us, liaises with the teacher, and that's been the key, that partnership with another agency and with the family. Achoo! Achoo! A bit louder. Mika needs a lot of help with spelling, um, with the order of letters, and he also needs help with writing stories, proofreading his work, punctuating it. Thank you very much, Mika. Bye-bye. Mika's parents have been so positive about the pilot project, but the majority of parents at school want the best for their child and have been really proactive with the school about providing some other opportunities for Mika. The one thing that they were concerned about was the stigma that would be attached to, OK, Mika is dyslexic, and what does that mean, and what does um, what was his, uh, his friends and classmates think and say, and, and so on. Um, but once you put that aside and say, right, the, the, uh, the issue has been defined, then you can put in plan, uh, place a plan that will um, help him. The teacher that's, um, that has the two pilot boys um, actually went to um, the introductory spelled course. There's some brilliant strategies that I know the classroom teacher has been using that Marianne's shown the boys that has worked wonders for other children in the class. So that's been another benefit to us really from the spell project. It's been offering us some um, other ways of how we can teach our children. And certainly that, that confidence uh, that he has, he has gained over the last year um, in terms of his reading, wanting to read and, and giving it a crack. Jeremy Drummond is the executive officer of Spelled Auckland and Spelled New Zealand. Jeremy became involved in the organisation after her own son Jamie was tutored by Spelled for his dyslexia. Spelled is a not-for-profit organisation. It's been going uh, in New Zealand for, for over 30 years and most areas of New Zealand are looked after by a local Spelled member association. The Spelled method is to use a basket of strategies that help the specific child. Jeremy's own son Jamie is dyslexic. From a very early age, Jamie was always extremely articulate. When he got to school, that lovely, lively imagination just seemed to shrivel up. And then as he progressed through his first year of school, his handwriting hadn't really improved, his spelling, very phonetic, it seemed to be more focused on all these red marks on the page saying what you've got wrong rather than what a great story. And so that was kind of demoralising too when he was writing stories because, you know, he'd be getting all these spelling errors in it. When I first went to school, it, I think it was a bit of a shock coming from kindergarten where it's more about playing and doing things at your own pace. Yeah. And almost immediately, I think I found myself behind quite quickly. And it's a bit of a self-esteem knocker when you, you know, at such a young age, you feel that you're dumber than anyone else. I couldn't understand why I was worse at reading. And reading in front of the class was like standing up blindfolded in front of a shooting range. People would make off comments, why can't you read? Or like, oh, you only got 10% on this. Often it's not intended to be malicious, but it still hurt. Jamie came home one afternoon and he was having difficulty with his homework. He always had difficulty with, with his homework. He just started crying and he just said, you know, mum, you know, I'm, 
um, I'm just dumb, you know, and, and I hate school. I hate being like this. And my heart just broke because I couldn't bear the thought that, you know, his self-esteem had dropped to such a level that, um, that he, felt, he felt dumb and he was, you know, he was obviously reduced to tears. At that stage I joined up with Spelled and he was assessed and they sort of worked through the different issues that he had. His personality just blossomed again. The instant boost to his confidence knowing that he had, you know, a support person there and someone was going to help him. Children with learning difficulties need help when they first show signs of not coping at school. If you pick these kids up when they're six, seven and eight, you're not dealing with the car wreck at 18, you know, or 14, with uh, angry, disillusioned, violent teenagers who know they've got something to offer, who know they're clever, but aren't able to produce what the school system is asking them to produce. My name's Andrew Beecroft, I'm the Principal Youth Court Judge. My role involves supervising the work of the youth courts throughout New Zealand. So that's dealing with 14, 15 and 16 year olds, some 12 and 13 year olds, our toughest young offenders. All that other experts tell us is you've got to be on the lookout for these sorts of things. Learning disabilities should be high on your radar screen. I know there's one study in New Zealand in 2009 for the 16 to 19 year old age group, I think goes as far as to say 90% or so of 16 to 19 year olds in prison, in custody, have some form of learning disability. Well, that's a hugely significant finding. I mean, everything you see in the youth court cries out for earlier, targeted, coordinated intervention. Spelled's early intervention with Ryan means he is able to cope with his schoolwork. Because of all the work that um, Spelled have done with him this year, um, it's really just boosted his confidence hugely and given him that sort of extra confidence to believe in himself that he can be a part of a team and yeah, that he can play sport and participate and do well. We are getting more and more referrals from schools now as people become more aware of dyslexia and specific learning difficulties. It was only recognised by the Ministry in 2007, so um, it's, you know, people are, are learning and coming on board and are very welcoming of the information in schools and we try and work to promote the information back to the schools where we can. Teachers can only do so much. Every single child learns differently and they can only really help the ones that learn a particular style. And so if, you don't, if you're not learning that particular style, um, you, you get left behind. I'd say I was amazed when I went straight to Spelled because immediately they seemed to understand exactly what I was going through. They'd have exercises already. They sort of aimed exactly at where my level was. Jamie was always really good at drawing and cartooning and so I had spoken to Jamie's new classroom teacher. I'd suggested to her that was it acceptable for him to do it on the computer. Fortunately Jamie's teacher was happy with that. She also said that he was able to write his stories in cartoon fashion. Each cell had to have a speech bubble in it. After I left high school I moved on to South Seas Film and Television School and studied drama directing and screenwriting. Scene two there and take two. I found moving on out of high school and to a, um, a film school, the creative mentality there was a, a, a lot different from high school and it sort of allowed a dyslexic brain to flourish and it was an environment where I could really um, focus and understand. I have never have thought that there would be education environments where I could understand it better than other people and sort of use the dyslexia to my advantage. After that, I moved into some short films and some commercials and music videos. And after doing that for a while, I got a full-time job as a real estate photographer and a um, real estate photography photo editor, um, which I've been doing full-time. Belinda's dyslexia wasn't recognised until she was assessed by Spelt when she was an adult. I went to my tutor once a week um, and she um, basically took me right back to basics. When I first started from Spelt, I was reading at a seven-year-old level and I'm now reading at a 12-year-old level, which is so much better. 
When I started my hairdressing career, um, I went to Winters the School of Hairdressing and Spell helped me initially with my assignments and, and everything like that that I was given from them and um, the tutors at Winters were really, really great as well. Um, I, I told them straight out that I had a learning disability and, and they were great about it. They were perfect oh, and, and top, perfect school to go top. to. As well? Initially, so it helped me with my written exams and everything like that. And in the end, she said, oh, "I don't need to help you anymore. You know, it's it's. I can understand everything that you're writing down in the exams, and it's great. So it's been spelled has been absolutely brilliant. Now, you know, working from home, doing my business, and um, doing my hairdressing, and doing what I love. What I get out of my job is a lot of satisfaction that I'm making somebody feel good about themselves. So it's really, really awesome. Never give up, never give up on your ambition. You can always have the drive to try to, to excel and, and um, get the help that you need. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.